All right, baby, I think it's super important that we differentiate between abolishing, defunding, and reforming the police. Regardless of which action you support, let's just start by saying what we mean and not conflating ideas to make it more palatable for people. Let's start with reform. By and large, most people would agree that the criminal justice system ain't it, it's not perfect. Police reform looks to specifically introduce positive change to police conduct with things like more training, new technology, so body cams, and community policing. The ideology behind police reform is that while the system isn't perfect, with enough focus and care, we can limit the ability of police officers to abuse their power or endanger the lives of the people they're supposed to protect. Now this is different than the call to defund police because reforms are ultimately going to cost more money, incentivizing a larger budget for the police department. Whereas defunding the police calls for lowering the budget and reallocating those funds to support community health and public services. Those who want to defund the police believe that the more money police have, the more dangerous they become, which we can see in the way that many departments around the nation have become militarized without need, or how having more money to get more cops results in over-policing in poor neighborhoods. Where reformists allocate focus and care to the police departments, those who want to defund the police shift that focus and care to the community itself. Hopefully lowering the need for police intervention and subsequently lowering opportunities for any abuse of power. Both of our current presidential prospects presidential prospect. oppose the idea of defunding the police, but the movement has found more traction amongst local governance. Now where defunding and abolishing the police part ways is in their end game. Most abolitionists would agree that the police should be defunded, but only as a means to an end, not as the end in itself. Abolishing the police means rejecting the idea that the police department can be altered or reformed in any meaningful way, even with a slash to the budget. Make sure you check out the work of organizations like Critical Resistance and Reclaim the Block to learn more about what abolitionists call reformist reforms, or reforms that constantly need to be revisited and reformed later on. But before we talk about the complexities of abolition, we need to first acknowledge that this is not a new conversation. For many of us, the abolition movement is only on our radar due to the current national spotlight on state-sanctioned killings of black people by police. But people beyond this moment, specifically black women, have been pointing us towards the goals of abolition for decades. Scholars and educators like Mariam Kaba, Ruth Wilson Gilmore, Mark Lamont Hill, Angela Davis, these are all people we should be listening to, following, learning from if we're new to the idea or if we have questions. But when we paint this as something new, then we create room for people to dismiss the entire movement as naive. Abolitionists believe that we should be focused on creating the conditions in which police are not needed in our society at all. Not a, not one of them. And creating those conditions involves something I like to call the three Ds. The first D is defund, which we've already talked about as divesting from police and investing in community-driven programs that promote health and safety. Then we've got decentralize, which means redistributing the functions and responsibilities of the police to groups that are specifically trained in those areas. Currently, the police are expected to meet way too many public needs, from traffic stops to welfare checks to, in the case of George Floyd, the suspected use of counterfeit bills. Even the response to violent crimes could be the responsibility of a much smaller, specialized force. The third D is decriminalize, lowering the bar for what's considered a criminal offense. Things like sex work, drug use, homelessness, or vagrancy are criminal offenses that aren't inherently violent or unsafe, and with proper support and regulation can function without police intervention. That's just a few of the ways that abolitionists work to create the conditions that we need. The things like decarceration and restorative justice that also plays a huge part in what it means to be an abolitionist. But none of those steps or D's should be mistaken for abolition itself. The goal of abolition is exactly as it states, to abolish the police. And if we're not clear on that goal, we can't ever get there. And if we're not as clear as possible about what we're doing, we run the risk of maybe dismantling and disbanding some police departments, but then creating a system that's just as harmful, or recreating police departments under a different name. It happened with the 13th Amendment of slavery, and it can happen again today. We also have to abolish the idea that the police exists to protect us. We've watched one too many cop shows and have created this collective mythos about who the police are and how they function in our society. We've had this trope about a few bad apples drilled into our minds, so now, when Whenever the institution is challenged, we can't help but retreat and protect the individuals that are associated with it. For abolition movements across history, the biggest barrier has always been a lack of imagination. Some of us, though, have never had these illusions. 
or have them dispelled really early through consistent interactions with an institution with police that sought to brutalize, violate, and scapegoat our communities. But what else is to be expected from an organization that finds its origin in the early 1700s as slave patrol, later evolving into segregation enforcement and keeping freed slaves in check? Police have always existed to protect property over people. They've always protected each other over the communities that they were there to serve. At this point, we're done with them failing us. So if you're an abolitionist, say it proudly. Don't water down the movement to appease the sensibilities of people you think might not understand. And if you're not an abolitionist and you identify more with defunding or reforming the police, say it with your chest. Stop co-opting abolition when you're not actually about that life. That does a disservice to everyone. The clearer we are, the easier it is to move forward.